Hello and welcome to Feels Good to Know. And I'm just so excited today. I feel good for what I'm about to talk about now. Yay! <clears throat> I'm going to talk about uh, nervousness and anxiety uh, for people who are empaths, intuitives, people who pick up on the vibe of the world going on around them to understand that as this intuitive being, you're an absorber. You're a person who is absorbing the world around you. And sometimes you can become quite saturated, taking it all in, absorbing it, putting out your compassion, wrapping your heart around others as they go through difficult times. Sometimes just being in a crowd of people that are stressed or anxious can cause a sensitive person and empath to carry the weight of that, the, the weight of their sensitivities. And often carrying all that is misunderstood by the person who's carrying it. Many times they may consider that they have, there's something wrong with them. They're having anxiety attacks. They're unable to go out and spend large amounts of time in big crowds. They get nervous around people who are very angry or boisterous, which could happen to anyone. But with an empath or an intuitive, um, a, a light being who is out there really trying to project love and light and joy and happiness forward, those situations not just feel that way at the moment if they're saturated or around negativity, but it can stick with the intuitive or the empath, um, the peacemaker. It can, it can go home with them. It can sit inside their dreams when they're sleeping or cause nervousness, unexplainable um, anxiety. It can run rampant and cause um, shortness of breath and, and uh, symptoms of stress. And I'm happy to share that oftentimes when we're looking at our state of being, when we're looking at what's happening inside of us, we need to also look at the idea and possibly consider that maybe your bucket's full. Maybe you've absorbed enough for now and it's time to empty the bucket, to let some of that out, to resource through journaling, ways to get that off your chest, to have a good cry if you need it. Sometimes offering outreach and volunteering can help settle that overwhelmed feeling. Sometimes a good cry, a good laugh, my favorite of all the possibilities, a great good laugh. Touching base with someone who's grounded and other people who are happy can often help us dump that bucket empty it so we can fill it with compassion, kindness, love, and outreach more. Being able to recognize I'm carrying a lot right now, I'm built to the top, and I have to empty my bucket is a very healthy approach. It's good for us to get things out. To not think that there's something wrong with you because of these feelings. That's another part that can go wrong. It's, I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't, I can't get happy. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm sad. I'm depressed. I'm carrying the weight of the world. There could be, of course, many, many things that cause that. But if you do know that you're someone who works very hard to try and help others feel joy, or that you put your energy forward, outreaching and giving to society, making that difference, that true effort to wake up each day and, and really nurture the quality of your thoughts so that they project forward from a place of love and excitement and light and joy. It's, it's important that you're also assessing possibly. Possibly your saturation point has been reached by soaking up the world around you. No matter what's going on outside your door, it's up to us to clean our filters out when we're in our sacred space. 
just like you would your furnace in your basement. Go into yourself, take that filter out, rinse it with the most bright, luminous light of knowing that you are a limitless light being, that you deserve and are worthy of rest and peace and harmony, that you can come into some sacred space within yourself to remedy that plugged, full-to-the-top feeling. Knowing when it's time to empty our bucket or clean our emotional filter is one of the strongest things you can do for your own psychology. There's a funny meme that says, when you catch yourself depressed, before you run off and consider that you're broken, look at the mood and the quality and be sure you're not standing next to angry, grumpy, miserable people all day. My feeling is it's not that it's anyone else's fault ever for how you feel is your own responsibility. But instead of feeling that we have no control over our state of being, it's empowering to know that we can rise up, we can grab our power, we can bring it forward from a place of having and maintaining inner balance, clearing and cleansing what we have absorbed and gathered. It doesn't mean you aren't still a deep, caring, loving light being, it just means that you shake it off so that you have a fresh start. Finding that balance between inner peace and outward outreach and compassion is a key piece to being able to be that much more of a giver. Not being afraid of people or blaming others for our state of being. Quite the opposite. We rise up. We dig our feet in like giant roots of the largest tree. We extend our, our energy outward from a place of love and light. We need to make sure that we as this tree are nurturing our cellular form that we are remaining grounded and peaceful believing in love and our limitless nature so that we can bash the heaviness out of our out of the weight we can take the weight out of all that heaviness and infuse it with light and levity I don't like the word hope because it's sort of like a wild string blowing in the wind or a, a, a spider's first little bit of webbing that blows until it hits something. Hope can be random. I prefer intention and intent to remain grounded and strong. It's good to know that we can have control over how saturated we get and to understand I'm overwhelmed or melancholy for a reason. And in that, I find deep empowerment and mastery of myself so I can be at service to others more.